Hello and welcome to SIADH and Diabetes Insipidus. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the president of Ed for Nurses, where we empower nurses to become extraordinary. I hope you'll join me here just for a few moments to explore the issues of SIADH and diabetes insipidus. This is a very common situation that people have difficulty understanding. And we oftentimes get them confused. It's very easy to get these two conditions confused because they are very similar conditions. As a matter of fact, they're actually opposite conditions that involve ADH or antidiuretic hormone. Now, the problems that occur here with SIADH and diabetes insipidus are problems of ADH, which is antidiuretic hormone. This is also called vasopressin. Now, ADH in the body does a number of different things. It regulates the body water, so it controls the kidneys, and it controls how much water the kidneys are able to excrete and how much water the kidneys hang on to. So this is one of the main functions of ADH. Another time that we can see abnormal amounts of ADH is in our patient who has cirrhosis. Our patient with cirrhosis and then who develops some portal hypertension can end up developing ascites as a result of having too much ADH being produced by the liver. So ADH is anti-diuretic hormone. I think this is one of the reasons why we get a little bit confused with it because it's kind of a, a double negative or it's kind of a negative thing we're talking about. So when a patient has anti-diuretic hormone, the patient's not diuresing. So it controls body water. The second thing that ADH is going to do is to cause vasoconstriction. And one of the main reasons why we give the patient vasopressin, for example, in a cardiac arrest situation, oftentimes we're going to give the patient vasopressin. So that's been added to our ACLS standards now. And the reason for that is because in many cases in cardiac arrest, patients tend to have a vasopressin deficiency. So we're giving it to them for the vasoconstriction part so that when the patient's recessive hopefully the patient's going to develop a higher blood pressure, etc. So why we're concerned about it here is because these problems of ADH are going to cause water problems in our patient. Now the control of antidiuretic hormone is done by the posterior pituitary. So we're talking about the pituitary gland, which is in the skull, in the brain here. So most of the situations that are going to cause a patient to develop an abnormal ADH level are going to be related to the brain. So that's one of the things that's very helpful to know about these conditions of SIADH and diabetes insipidus is that ADH is controlled by the posterior pituitary in the brain. Okay, now let's take a look here at this whole idea of antidiuretic hormone. If we have too much antidiuretic hormone, that means the patient is going to be hanging onto fluid. The patient's not going to be diuresing. So the patient is hanging onto fluid with too much antidiuretic diuretic hormone. Now too little and the patient will be losing fluid. The patient is going to be diuresing. Hopefully we're not going to take that fluid then and sell it like these little girls are. <laughs> so the problem that we're faced with in our patients in the hospital is going to be a situation where the patient has some abnormal urine and we're trying to figure out what the problem is. So there's two things we need to do in order to be able to find either diabetes insipidus or SIADH. What we need to look at is we need to look at the urine and we need to look at the serum sodium. Now, if you walk into your patient's room and you notice that the patient has a scant amount of concentrated urine in the Foley catheter, you're probably thinking, well, the patient's dehydrated. Makes sense, right? So then all you'd have to do in order to validate that is to look at the patient's serum sodium. If your patient's dehydrated, you would expect the serum sodium to be high, right? All right, well, what if your patient had a just all this dilute urine in the Foley catheter? You walk in beginning your shift, you take a look at this Foley catheter bag, and it's filled with dilute urine. Well, the first thing you're thinking of is, I can't believe the previous shift didn't dump that. Right? Well, and then you got to be thinking about the fact the patient's probably volume overloaded, that the patient has all that urine they're getting rid of. So now all we need to do to validate that is go look at the patient's sodium. The serum sodium in that patient should be low because the patient's got all this extra fluid on board diluting their sodium. So what we need to do in order to find these problems in our patient is simply to look at the urine... And you know what concentrated urine looks like. And then look at the sodium. Now this chart may help you a little bit in finding these problems in our patient. 
First of all, again, go back to the idea that ADH is coming primarily from the posterior pituitary, and therefore most of the patients who are going to have one of these problems are going to be having some kind of neurologic dysfunction. So first of all, I'm looking for the neurologic dysfunction in my patient. Then I'm looking at these two things. Now, we have a couple wordings here. We have a couple things here that might throw some people. When we talk about osmolality, serum osmolality, urine osmolality, whenever we talk about osmolality, simply substitute in the phrase or the term concentration instead of osmolality. So here, in this case here, it would be serum concentration and urine concentration is what we're going to substitute in instead of osmolality. Now let's take a look at the chart here and see if that makes a little bit more sense to you. Because, you know, a lot of times osmolality just gets confusing to us. Whenever we hear that term, we just kind of glaze over, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this here. I walk into my patient's room this morning and I notice my patient has a small amount of scant concentrated urine. So the urine is concentrated. Go over to the right side of your diagram there. You see urine concentration high in dehydration, right? Okay, let's work from right to left then. Serum concentration in dehydration would also be high, and so would the serum sodium, right? Okay, that makes sense. That's what we were talking about before. All right, well, let's go up to the SIADH. Now, this patient also is going to have that scant amount of concentrated urine in the Foley catheter, but look at the serum sodium. See, what's happening is the patient has too much antidiuretic hormone, meaning the patient is not diuresing. They're hanging on the fluid. And because this patient's hanging on the fluid, they are diluting their sodium and making the sodium low. All right, now let's take a look at diabetes insipidus. You walk into the patient's room, you notice that the Foley catheter bag is filled with dilute urine. I would expect my patient's volume overloaded. Maybe we gave the patient lots of volume during surgery, and the patient's got too much volume on board, they're trying to diurese it out. In which case, the serum sodium should be low. But in diabetes insipidus, you notice that the serum sodium is high. The reason for this is because the patient is lacking antidiuretic hormone, which means the patient is inappropriately diuresing and becoming dehydrated. So they have all of this urine that is not very concentrated because they're getting rid of all this water, but at the same time, they're dehydrating the serum. See how the serum sodium is going up, serum concentration is going up? So that's what we see in diabetes and stuff. To find these two problems, all you got to do is just look at the urine, is it concentrated or not, and look at the serum sodium. Do those two things match? If they do, then you know what it is. Okay, let, let's put what we learned there to the test. Which lab value is consistent with SIADH? Okay, I hope you guessed letter A, a serum sodium of 125. Remember, this patient is inappropriately hanging on the fluid, diluting that serum sodium while at the same time having concentrated and dark urine. Let's take a look at another question. What is the treatment priority for diabetes insipidus? Okay, I hope you picked letter C. We want to give fluids to this patient because this patient is inappropriately dumping off fluids. Now, that patient's serum sodium level will be high, so you might be a little bit concerned about giving normal saline, but we don't want to give this patient too much free water, which could end up in the brain. So, in summary, SIADH is caused by too much antidiuretic hormone. Patient's hanging on the fluid. They've got concentrated urine with a low sodium. Diabetes insipidus, too little antidiuretic hormone. They're dumping off fluid, dilute urine, and a high serum sodium. That's how we're going to find these problems. Thank you for joining me for SIADH and Diabetes Insipidus. Find out more and get evidence-based practice updates every week with our 2-Minute EBP Challenge. Go to edfornurses.com to find out more.